you might be using automation too early. Automation is a really powerful tool, but if you apply it too early, it could actually hold back your mix. I've helped thousands of people improve their mixing over the last few years, and one of the biggest mistakes I see is that they do way too much volume automation in particular, way too early in the process. You wanna hold off on automation till the very final step in the mixing process, and think of it more as a fine tuning and perfecting tool. It can, of course, be used for creative things as well, and you can do that a little bit earlier if you need to, but when it comes to majority of automation moves, I wait until the sixth and final step of the mixing process to actually start applying automation. And I think that really helps me because throughout the entire mixing process, I can kind of fine tune my volumes. I can keep making sure that everything sounds as good as possible. But if I do it too early, then it's just gonna keep reverting back to whatever automation I did too early. So hold off on automation. Now we're finally in the sixth step in the mixing process. And we're gonna start applying it to the mix that we've been doing together. If you don't know what I'm talking about, in this video series, we've gone through the entire mixing process together from setting our volumes all the way through EQ, compression, effects, and now finally automation. And if you don't already have it, be sure to grab my six step checklist to a pro mix from the link in the description below. It just goes through six steps that all professional mixes have and how you can do them specifically inside Logic. It's really, really helpful. It's free from the link in the description, so be sure to grab it. That way, next time you're mixing, you can just quick reference back to it anytime you're working on it. But we're gonna go and jump into Logic and start working on our automation for this song. Now, there's a billion things you can automate. It's basically limitless. So the three that I typically encourage people to focus on are your vocal volume. You can call this vocal writing. This is where throughout the entire song, we're gonna ride the vocal. And if it's a little bit quiet on a phrase, we'll turn it up. If it's a little bit loud, we'll turn it down. That way the vocal's always sitting exactly right in the mix. It's the most important thing. So a little bit of dedicated time and attention to this is really, really helpful. I'd also throw out that I think just vocal or volume automation throughout the mix is important. So if that guitar is a little bit loud in the intro where there's less going on, but then quiet in the chorus, you might need to balance those two volumes a little bit. We've set our static volumes, which is the best general volume level, but you might want to just make sure that there's nothing that's too loud, too quiet throughout the mix. And you can also volume automate just for fun. We might do that a little bit later in this video. The second is pan knob. So painting things a little bit wider, a little bit narrower in the different sections to give it a little bit more width or to have movement. Sometimes you can have things moving around. Don't get too heavy handed with this. This can be really distracting to the listener and you don't want your mix to feel distracting. You want to serve the song. So if it's subtle, then it can feel really good. Or if it's really obvious for a really particular cool moment, then that's good. But you don't want to do too much of that panning automation. And the third is effects. Now in most songs, I'm automating effects up and down in choruses. So in the verses, I might bring the effects down so the vocals feel a little bit drier. And then the choruses, I'll bring them up a little bit more since there's typically more going on and they feel a little bit bigger and lusher. In this song, because I have a vocal that's for the verses and the bridge, and then a separate vocal stack that's for the choruses, it's kind of a woe chorus song. I'm not going to do that in this song because it just doesn't need it. They're two totally different parts. So I'm not going to be automating effects in that way, but we're going to automate effects in a different way that's really cool that I bet you haven't thought about or maybe you haven't thought about that I think you'll enjoy. So stick around for that. That's going to be the last thing we do. Let's go and start with vocal writing, vocal automation. Now, there's two main ways to do automation. The first, if you hit A on the keyboard to bring up your automation here, is just to draw it in. So I could just click here, click here, and then just kind of draw in the different points that I need. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a little bit time consuming, but it can definitely work. I've done it for many songs. If you're coming from GarageBand, that was the only way to do it in GarageBand. But in Logic, we open up the ability to draw it in or write it in. Now we could do this by setting read over here down to latch. And now anything that I do as this plays, it's gonna be written onto that track. You can do that right here inside Logic, which can be nice. It's definitely handy, much faster than drawing in every little point, especially for something like vocal writing. Or you can get something like this Fader Port 16 that I have, or just a single Fader Port, or any other DAW controller, the X-Touch from Behringer, anything like that. And you can just draw it in. So with this, I can do the same thing, but I can draw it with this actual fader, which allows me to really fine tune it. And it gives me kind of a in-person feel with it, uh, more, on hands-on feel with it. That's just nice. It's a little more fun, right? So you definitely don't need something like this, but it can be really helpful. And by the way, if you want to pick up something like this, if you don't already have it, I'll link to this down below in my Sweetwater link. If you use that link, whether it's to get this fader port, a different touch controller, or really anything, a guitar, a case, anything like that, a small part of it comes back to help support this channel. So any Sweetwater link on any of my videos, if you use them, will come back and support this channel. So grab a fader port or whatever it is you need. It won't cost you any extra and it will help me continue to put out these videos for free. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into vocal writing. The first step of any sort of automation and really anything in mixing is to listen and determine if it needs it at all and then if it needs it, what it needs. So let's go and listen and think about what you think this vocal needs if it needs anything. Um, 
So overall, it's at the right level, right? I think it gets a little bit too loud on kind of that loudest section at the end there, but I really think that first phrase just gets a little bit buried as things are fading out. Just kind of lost, right? So I definitely want to bring that up. And then the second thing I want to do is bring up the tails of the phrases kind of right after the phrase. There's cool things that happen with the voice. And by automating those up, it makes the vocal feel like it's right in front of the listener. So check it out. I'm going to do it on this fader port, but again, you could just draw it in right here with this fader. Let's go ahead and do it. Catch that think one more time. Might was okay. We're going to catch the start of that phrase. That might's a little loud. One more time. And I actually want to turn that down just a little bit more there. Not set a doubt at all. So catching kind of the breathiness at the end of that phrase. It's cool, right? It sounds maybe a little weird in solo, but in the context of the song, you just feel that breath a little bit more. Okay, so that's vocal writing. After you do this, always be sure to turn off touch, turn it back to read. Otherwise, it's gonna record everything you do on that track as you're going throughout and doing things. So if I come up here and I open this EQ and I just wanna tweak this setting while I'm listening to the song, it's gonna follow all the moves that I make with that, which is cool and can be a cool effect, but probably not what you're wanting to do when you're just trying to tweak it. Save you a lot of headache. So be sure to turn that off. Okay, we're gonna play around with the pan automation just a little bit here. So I'm gonna open these guitars and we're just gonna draw this in. What I wanna do is basically as it's doing this build i want to pan these left and right guitars in just a little bit so we're going to go down to pan which is under main we're going to do absolute which just means that it's the absolute pan position as opposed to the relative i find relative confusing to work in i'm going to do that on this right guitar as well and I just want to set it basically right now, it's at the extremes, far left, far right. We're just going to bring it so I'm using the marquee tool, selecting this entire area, and I'm just going to bring it so that in this, it's somewhere kind of around like halfway panned ish. And we will shift this so it kind of fades into the center there, and then do the same thing over on this ear, and bring this so it's about halfway, so about 42 on this one as well. And then what I want to do, let's just listen to that real quick. And then as it's going to this build, I want to get a little bit wider throughout that build. So it's just going to give us this feeling like it's getting bigger, 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 bigger through that section. So we're going to play with that for one second here. Get it so that, let's see, where's the down? Probably right here. So all the way left right at this point right here, the start of that measure. And then check this out. I'm not even bringing it in just a little bit more. It's going all the way to like 38, something like that. It doesn't have to be super precise. No one's ever gonna see these numbers. Keep that in mind. So it's gonna start a little bit narrow and then yeah. it's gonna pan out wide, right? Cause Subtle, but it just gives you that little bit of a shift, right? It makes a mix feel more dynamic. Okay, the last thing I wanna do with these guitars is also just, I'm gonna take all four of these guitars and I just wanna pan them up for that same area where it's going da, 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 da. just exaggerate that build a little bit, right? So we're gonna come on here and I've selected them, which now my fader port means I can see really clearly. It's these four tracks. I'm gonna go back just a little bit. I need to switch these over to Latch. And actually let's go, we'll go to touch. Touch means that while I'm doing the automation, it's gonna follow it. And as soon as I stop, it's gonna go back to the original point. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and just bring these up a little bit. Cool, might be a little bit exaggerated. We'll do that one more time and just bring, not quite as extreme. Cool. I dig it. 
So it starts to make it feel a little bit more extreme. And real quick, before we get into the next thing, if you're liking this video and you think it's helpful, and you think it'd be helpful to someone else, could you be sure to like it down below? That way YouTube knows to show it to more people. It's super, super helpful. I hate to be a YouTuber, but I just want more people to see this video so I can help them as well. Anyway, let's go and get back into it. I'm gonna do the same thing actually on this kick and snare. Let's go ahead and move this snare verb track down. And we're just gonna grab this kick and snare. So this is back to kind of volume automation, but again, we're thinking in that those terms of what will make this more interesting for the listener, right? So it's the end of this build really that I wanna start pulling it up just a little bit. Oh, before I do that, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go back to these guitars. You see how easy it is to forget this. Switch this back to read so I don't accidentally write any automation on them later. Okay, select this kick through snare bottom. Set this, we'll go in also to uh, touch, I mean, not latch. That way it will fall back to the original position as soon as I'm done automating it. And these four tracks here. Cool, that felt good. And I'm gonna, let's see, it's kind of holding over just a little bit on that first hit. I think I wanna stop it to where, so that it's really more or less all the way back down when it gets to that first hit there. Cool, so you can tweak it in these parameters. Okay, the second thing I wanna do is as soon as I get into this section of the bridge, as soon as these drums come in, I wanna bring up the drum room. So this is a different version of varying the effects throughout the song. As I said, a lot of times I'm doing it on the vocals since that's the main thing that's getting really prominent effects. But in this case, I wanna do it on the room. So I'm gonna turn this back to read on these tracks. I'm gonna go down to this room track here. First thing I wanna do is just turn it up generally throughout this whole area. So I'm gonna find where this section ends. It's probably right around here. Okay, so this measure right here, and I'm just gonna find the start of it is around 65, so right before that, we're just gonna select this whole area, and we're just gonna crank this up just a little bit. So it's about negative seven. I'm gonna, let's listen to it, see how loud we want to get. Okay, so if we just listen to that, I'll bring it back down on this fader port here. So you can For this build in particular, oh, yeah. with it back at its original level, something like this. It's very kind of close and intimate with it turned up. makes those drums feel much bigger, like they're taking up more space, and it kind of, again, it just adds to the dynamics of the song. And then I also want to automate it up on each of those individual hits. So I'm just gonna go into touch here, and then each time it does, I'm just gonna push it up on this fader port. But again, you could do that right here with this fader in Logic. Let's go from the start of it. And then I want this to fade back here as the rest of the hits this chorus so it's not as big and huge as these other things come in, but I wanna have it higher than it was before. So it's around negative seven. I think something probably around here is gonna feel better. So otherwise it's gonna be a really intense transition and I could fade that down more if you wanted to get it all the way back, but I kinda like the idea of these drums feeling bigger in this last chorus. Go and shift that so it really is down by the that first hit of the chorus. Cool. 
Okay, so a little bit different than traditional effect automation, but we did the vocal writing, we did a little bit of pan automation to make things feel bigger, we did a little additional volume automation, and then we also rode the effects on this drum kit to bring it up and make it feel bigger at different points in our mix. Again, we're just making the mix feel dynamic and helping polish it so it feels more finalized. Okay, so that's automation. Now, real quick, as you finish automation, you're gonna to wanna to start taking your mix out to your car, listening to it on your Bluetooth speaker and your AirPods, somewhere outside of Logic, right? You're gonna to wanna to listen to it elsewhere. So you're gonna to wanna to turn it up. And the way that you wanna do that is not with the built-in mastering tool because that's gonna do other things to the mix as well. It has EQ curves, it has maybe a little stereo widening, things that you might not like, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't like things in your mix, it's things you don't like about the mastering. So what you wanna do instead is set a limiter on your master track. So we're gonna go down here to dynamics, adaptive limiter, also called your stereo output. The idea here is that we're just gonna turn up, we're gonna set a, a brick wall at the top here. That means that it can't go past and get into digital peaking. If you go past the zero, you start to get digital peaking. It's gonna protect from that, but we're gonna turn the song up into it. Now, typically speaking, if your song is balanced, just getting three or four decibels of gain reduction on your limiter is gonna get you in the ballpark of a decent level. It's still probably going to be quieter, but it's going to be close enough to compare in on a Bluetooth speaker and AirPods, whatever. So you want to set your output ceiling here to negative 0.3. That's going to protect from any sort of additional peaks barely spiking through. I'm going to turn on true peak detection here. And then just in the loudest section of your song, so for me it probably is in this area going, and going into this last chorus, we just want to be bringing up the gain until we're getting three to five decibels of gain reduction, but use your ears to make sure that you're not getting too much weirdness with that. Sometimes it can start to have a pump in here. So that's looking good to me on this reduction. I'm seeing about three decibels. And then you could just use your uh, cycle region here to set it for the entire length of the song. Make sure that it's not going on forever and that it starts at the right moment. In this case, I probably need to shift it around a little bit. And then we'd go down to bounce. And then we can just set this as a wave, the PCM, you can do a wave, which is gonna be full resolution. Sometimes for just these quick mix notes, it's okay to do an MP3. I know some people are gonna argue with me on that, but it's it's fine. It's easier to send back and forth to yourself. If you're listening to broad scale EQ, it's likely not gonna be the compression that happens, turning it into an MP3 that's gonna affect your listening. But it doesn't hurt to do a wave. So the PCM, you can do a wave, and then you would just export it out, save it, find it, send, I text it to my phone. So I send it from messages on my laptop to my phone and then I can just listen to it on my phone, in my car, Bluetooth speaker, wherever, AirPods, all that good stuff. Okay, so that's the last thing. Then you're gonna go through some mix revisions and then we're going to come back and we're gonna master it. So come back next week, we're gonna set up a mastering session. I'm gonna show you how to master like a pro. If you don't already have it, be sure to grab my six step checklist to a pro mix from link in the description that we can quickly reference back to each of these stages. You don't have to keep coming back to this video series. It's really gonna help you out and it shows you specifically how to do all this stuff inside Logic. It's free from link in the description. So be sure to grab it. Before you go, I'd love to hear from you. Is this how you've been handling automation? Did you wait till the end and do these really fine tuning things? Or were you just jumping in right off the bat and doing it right when you started mixing? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video.